welcome everyone to this online mini conference addressing the harms of pornography in African nations. My name is Haley McNamara and I am the director of the International Center on Sexual Exploitation. I'm just helping to facilitate our meeting today so you'll hear from me once or twice but uh, I'm really just helping to create this space for the leaders who are speaking with you all today. We are having this event because the speakers today have found that countries in Africa are really reaching a tipping point of pornography exposure and its public health consequences. So pornography exposure and consumption is a wide scale problem around the globe, including in African countries. And we know that this is largely due to the growing presence of technology and improved internet connectivity that facilitates and normalizes online pornography. And around the world, we're seeing that research is showing up and along with anecdotal stories and testimonies of people that pornography is being linked to young people losing study time and motivation, experiencing neurological harms, becoming sexually violent or aggressive and more. There's a, many, many of these kinds of harms. So the Coalition to End Sexual Exploitation in Africa is a loose-knit coalition that helps to facilitate and support African leadership, educating others on the harms of pornography. So today you are invited to join this coalition. I'm going to put a link in the chat where you can learn more and sign up for this coalition. And I'll also include my email. Um, so you can feel free to email me if you have any questions. And uh, so I'll put my email in the chat as well. And I'll talk a bit more about the coalition and ways that you can get involved um, with us in that way um, in just a moment. But we'll next go and have um, our first speaker begin. So we're going to have Chinir give her presentation first while Alvin tries to get back onto the call. Um, and Chinir, if you start having problems, uh, potentially turning off your video will be the way that we can most reliably keep the event moving. Um, all right, so I will, you are pinned so everyone can see you and I'm going to make you the host so that you can share your screen. Great, it's the floor is yours. Okay, so um, welcome everybody. I'm really so excited to see us all and um, to know that all of our hard work has finally paid off with this um, exciting um, online meeting that has been scheduled to look at the harms um, of pornography. Unfortunately, um, Alvin cannot present, but I'll be delving right in um, to talk about how um, pornography, how pornography can be linked to um, sexual violence. So let me just go ahead and share my screen. Okay, so as I said, I'll be presenting um, pornography's link to sexual violence. And um, we, let me start by saying, as an organization, I work around sexual violence against children and um, also work pretty much with um, um, girls, boys. And at some point, um, there were so many, um, teenagers, young people were coming up to me asking about issues around pornography. That was like about four years ago. And it just seemed to intrigue me. A lot of them were getting addicted to porn. And um, I couldn't just understand why um, um, it was so difficult. Well, if you started, you know, why don't you just get off? And I, I did a little bit of research before I came in contact with NCOC and found a lot of the damaging effects and actually how pornography is linked you know, of course, to addictions and um, sexual violence. And I'll just be going ahead to, um, to share some of the things that I, I got, as well as um, from NCOC, and some of the information I've got, gotten um, over the years working with them. Um, I'll be sharing quite a number of research also that has been um, some studies that have been carried out, you know, in this field. We don't have so much of it around um, Africa. 
Um, but you know, there are one or two studies here and there that we can draw inference from. Now, so talking about pornography, we see that there was a, um, a, a research that was carried out in Nigeria, you know, which shows that about 381 students from Nigerian universities, you know, about um, a research was carried out with 381 students and, you know, it, it was identified that about 50% of them, you know, indicated that their sexual behaviors was directly tied to their exposure to internet pornography. So I'm going to be showing us five different ways in which um, pornography has been linked to sexual violence. Some of the um, five different ways in which you know, pornography makes um, sexual violence even more um, deadly you know, and more prevalent and available for, um, for predators. The first is that Pornography normalizes physical, verbal, and sexual violence. In other words, it makes users see physical, verbal, and sexual violence as normal. You know, there was a particular picture I had wanted to show us where it showed a boy wearing a t-shirt with eat, sleep, rape, and repeat on his t-shirt, showing that he sees rape as any other activity as um, compared to eating and sleeping. And that's what pornography does you know, to the mindset, making um, young people um, and users generally feel that you know, it, is, it is a normal um, activity to be engaged in. There was an analysis of about um, 50 popular pornography videos. And of this study that was carried out of these 50 videos, it was revealed that about 88% of these videos that were analyzed contained scenes of physical violence, while 49% of the videos contained and showed verbal aggression. Now, what is this saying? That as many people as get involved in, and we are seeing a high prevalence, as many people as are getting involved in watching pornography, they are getting normalized to feel that physical violence in relationships, verbal violence is actually okay. You know, and what does that also make them do? It also teaches the users that women enjoy sexual violence because of that same study that was carried out, about 87% of the acts that are carried out are actually perpetrated against women. And in those videos that were reviewed and analyzed, it was also seen that a huge number of them, of the videos portrayed these women being physically and verbally abused, but it does not show any form of um, um, response. It doesn't show you know, that they are standing against it. It doesn't show that they are rejecting. In other words, conveying the message that the women actually want to be physically or verbally um, abused, you know, causing them to accept this behavior as normal. Now, it also teaches women and girls to accept sexual violence as normal. So not only does pornography teach users, those who, um, the men who are watching this, who are watching porn, that sexual abuse and sexual violence against women, you know, is okay, but it's also teaching the women and girls to accept sexual violence as normal as well. So we, it was found out also in another study that was carried out, you know, of females um, um, between the age of 14 and 19 who engaged in watching porn that, you know, it's okay because a greater likelihood, a greater percentage of the, this number of, um, 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 of girls who were exposed to pornography, you know, actually increase the likelihood of their being victims to sexual harassment and assault. So we see that um, um, exposure to sexual, um, exposure to pornography increases the um, the way in which um, users, you know, accept or use um, 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 pornography to sexually abuse, you know, children and their users. Secondly, pornography objectifies and dehumanizes people. There is an increased likelihood that those who use pornography will sell and buy sex. There is nothing 
contained in um, pornography that talks about you know human rights there is no human rights when it comes to sex to um, pornography it teaches the people to see the um, to see human beings as objects it dehumanizes them and reduces them from being not, um, human beings to actually viewing people as objects viewing people as um, things that can be used to gratify and satisfy their sexual pleasure now a study of 18 year old males you know was carried out and it was found that frequent and daily use of pornography were significantly more likely to have sold and bought sex than other boys of the same age. So those who use pornography are a greater um, um, fall within the percentage of those who have the greater likelihood of selling and using sex. Because again, they feel that they get to understand or see that pornography you know, or women or men, as the case may be, are objects that can be used. It also increases support for violence. People who use pornography, you know, find out that they have increased support for violence. You know, they tend to carry out violence against uh, members of the opposite sex and even those of the same sex, you know, carry out violence against them because that's what porn teaches. Among college-aged men, in a, um, in a study that was carried out by Paul J. Wright and some other researchers, that among college-aged men, the frequency of exposure to pornography, magazines, and um, reality TV programs that objectify women also showed that they, are, they had stronger attitudes that are supportive of also violating women so the more in other words the more they viewed porn the more they watched porn the greater the likelihood that they will also violate porn that's what that particular study showed so not only does porn increase um, um normalizes the um normalizes physical violence sexual violence um verbal aggression it also objectifies the people that are being used in those pornographic materials the third thing that porn does in relation to sexual violence is that it encourages rape myths, myths around rape. And what are rape myths? Rape myths are false beliefs about sexual violence. And some of these false beliefs are that probably somebody deserves to be raped because of how they dress or they deserve to be raped because of where they are, because of what they drink, or probably because they are in a marital relationship. And so it makes it OK you know, to rape that person. Now, this is exactly what porn does. Because you know, we find out that um, in a meta-analysis of about 46 studies that was carried out, it was reported from those studies that the effects of exposure to pornographic material are clear and consistent. And what does that consistency show? It shows that pornography use puts people at an increased risk for committing sexual offenses and accepting rape needs. And so when I work with young people and they tell me, you know, well, um, I'm just catching fun. I'm not harming anybody. I'm, you know, I'm just doing this, you know, myself. I love, I, um, I love what I watch. You know, it's important for us, you know, those of us who are listening, those of us who are watching, those of us who work with people, who work with families, it's important that we let them know that exposure to pornography, because the more you get exposed to a particular thing, the more it makes it, it makes the content of what you're watching seem normal, you know? So if you watch material that constantly portray that, you know, it's okay to physically violate someone or it's okay to verbally, you know, abuse someone or it's even okay to sexually abuse another person. We find out that gradually that affects the way the person thinks and that affects the way the person behaves. In an, in an African context where we know that um, there are, um, you know, there's that culture of silence around sexual issues, you know, and there's, you know, um, the um, victim blaming, we find out that pornography further aggravates those mindsets, further um, aggravates, you know, um, the belief of those myths that it's okay, 
you know, to blame, you know, um, a girl who has been abused because simply because, you know, she wore what was termed as being suggestive because that's what porn from this study that we have seen, you know, has um, presented to us. Now, the fourth thing, the first that we've looked at is that Pornography normalizes physical violence. It normalizes um, verbal aggression. The second thing that, um, that we have seen here today is also to see that pornography objectifies and dehumanizes people, looking at people as just mere body parts and looking at women, particularly you know, for men who watch porn, as just being objects to gratify you know, their sexual behavior. And then thirdly, we see that pornography also encourages, you know, rape meat and um, um, makes people believe because this is basically what porn, you know, presents um, in um, most of the um, most of the scenes that are being presented in pornographic material. Um, there was this report that came out from Fox News. Um, in 2017, about um, 15 men that were arrested. And from that report, it was identified or they were arrested and charged for the singular purpose of using, you know, the internet and soliciting for sex, you know, from children and um, asking them for sexually explicit um, material. So we see how, you know, um, porn, you know, is, um, is also used to aggravate, you know, or to influence sexual abuse against children. Now, how does it do that? Let us start, you know, by showing, you know, how um, um, pornography, you know, encourages you know, sexual violence against children. Now, a lot of hardcore porn, also from some studies that were carried out, we find out that a lot of hardcore porn has have depictions of sex with persons that look like children. First, we have a lot of hardcore porn that are focused on sex with children, using sex in um, using children in sexual scenes. That is um, child porn. Then we also have pornography that depicts sex with persons that look like children. In other words, dressing up adults, you know, to look like children or depictions of sex with cartoons which look like children, you know, making it appear okay for someone to actually have sex with children. And you can imagine somebody watching things like this over and over and over again. And now coming on to, um, to depictions of pornography that show scenarios that actually portray incest. You know, we find out that it also aggravates and it, it also encourages, you know, incest and um, the sexual abuse, you know, of, of children specifically. Now, pornography is also used as a tool. I need, I, I need us to hear this. Pornography is also used as a tool for grooming children. We work basically with um, sexually abused children. We provide support you know, for children, counseling, psychosocial support groups, and all of that. And a whole lot of the children that we have worked with, some of the children that we have worked with, have indicated that pornography was used as a tool that was used to lure them to accept the act as normal. Now, what does pornography do? you know, with children, when pe um, perpetrators and predators use pornography as a tool with children. First, they use it to educate children on how to have sex. They also use pornography as a tool to encourage children to reenact these behaviors that they are watching. You know, so they show children this to um, th this um, pornography materials, you know, educate them and make them feel that, okay, so this is what you are supposed to do. And then encourage them to go ahead and carry out this, um, these activities, you know, that they see in the materials. Thirdly, is to now also use the pornography, you know, to also excite children sexually. And, you know, this is a, a a place where I've tried during counseling sessions to try to explain to parents, you know, and try to explain to, you know, children as well, that the fact that a child probably responds, you know, to sexual touch or sexual images doesn't necessarily 
doesn't mean in fact that that child has consented to that activity because the child you know is a human being that will respond to stimuli and so when pornography is used to excite to children the children tend to believe that you know they want it and so accept that activity you know as being okay so if i feel this way then it means it's okay so i can um, allow uncle or auntie do whatever he or she wants to do sexually with me because you know I want it. If I don't want, if I didn't want it, I would not feel um, this way. Pornography is also used as a tool to enter children into sexual contact with adults for their personal sexual abuse or purposes of sexual exploitation. You know, with those children, you know, or with others. The fifth thing that the fifth way in which pornography. Um, um, is linked or influences sexual behavior, unfortunately, is its influence on child on child harmful sexual behavior. Now, this is a really distressing um, um, thought and phenomenon, especially, you know, for any parent to have to, you know, want to think about, you know, that my child, you know, or, a, or another child, you know, actually practiced harmful sexual behavior with you know, a child. And we find out that a lot of times pornography is seen as the culprit, you know, in making this happen. Research shows that early exposure to pornography has been linked to increased likelihood that children will act with harmful sexual behavior towards other children when they are exposed to pornography. Because remember what I said earlier, that pornography is a tool, it teaches. It educates, it encourages, it excites, you know, children to get involved in sexual activity. You know, so when they view porn, the tendency is that they now carry out the activities and the actions that they are seeing in this pornographic material with other children that are with them. I've had um, schools and, you know, we've had parents call us up on our hotline to share distressing news of either their children or other, um, their children being involved in sexual activity with other children. And, you know, we can imagine how, you know, how painful and distressing that will be, you know. There was also a longitudinal study. A longitudinal study also found out that children are more than five times likely to exhibit sexually aggressive behavior if they have watched violent porn. I will take that again. So this longitudinal study shows that children are more than five times likely to exhibit sexually aggressive behavior. So first is that the porn teaches them, educates them and encourages them to engage in sexual activity with other children. But it doesn't stop there. What it also does is that it encourages aggressive sexual behavior, especially when that child has been exposed to pornography. So taking a recap of all that I have said is that pornography, um, pornography normalizes physical, verbal, and sexual violence, because this is what is portrayed in the scenes that are depicted in a whole lot of pornographic material. Secondly, is that pornography objectifies people. It doesn't value the rights of people. It doesn't value the fact that people are human beings that need to be respected and need to be valued. And we saw how a research showed that um, children, you know, who were involved in, um, in, in, in pornography were more likely to engage in um, buying and selling sex because they just see people as objects that will be used to gratify their sexual desires. And then thirdly, we saw also how pornography encourages rape meets. You know, because in porn, it shows sometimes the, the ladies try to play hard to get, or the ladies wear a particular kind of outfit, or they are in particular places. And because of all of these things, they are raped. And it now passes the information that, okay, so it's okay to abuse, you know, or, or rape or be um, sexually violent with somebody when they are found in those um, environments. Then it influences child sexual abuse because perpetrators use it as a tool to lure children, you know, excite children and to encourage them to engage 
um, in sexual behavior. And lastly, and very distressing, I must say, is that it influences children to, to harmfully um, abuse, to, to, to be involved in harmful sexual behavior with other children. Now, what do we do as I round up? What do we do? What can we do? Is to, is to, is to, is to get involved in, the, um, in this campaign that has been started, you know, in our, within our African context. The first thing I will encourage us, identify a contact of the campaign in your country and hook up. We have Nigeria here, we have um, 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 Kenya, you know, we have um, Liberia, you know, and all that. So identify if probably you don't have anyone in your, in, your, in your country, why not start it? We need to spread the news about how harmful pornography is and how it is actually damaging our children our, and um, relationships and encouraging, you know, sexual violence. For SOA Initiative, the organization that I run, you know, that works to end sexual violence, particularly against children, we'll be launching a Nigerian campaign in the first quarter of 2000 and, um, 2021, which will be next year. You know, so please, you can send an email to info at soar.org.ng, info at soar.org.ng to get more information about the campaign launch here in Nigeria and to register to be part of it. Thank you so much. I hope I did not exceed my time. Thank you, Chinier. Fantastic. Let's see. We will see if Dr. Bassan, are you able to speak with us? Yes, uh, good afternoon, Haley. I'm here and I'm ready to present if you are ready. I am. Wonderful. Um, Great, so I'm going to be sharing my screen so that you all are able to see her presentation as she speaks. All right, so you all should be able to see her presentation now. Yes, thank you. I see it, Haley. it's visible on my screen. Perfect. Thank you. Can I start? Yes, please. Thank you so much, Haley, and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you so much for joining us today for this first event, which we hope there will be many, many more across Africa as we are trying to protect children from online sexual exploitation and abuse, specifically focusing on pornographic material. Um, today, I'm just going to focus a little bit in this presentation on why it is important to address pornography in African nations. Uh, some of the research that we specifically have done in South Africa, I'm going to look at the impact of pornography on children. And then I'm also going to end off my presentation with a bit of uh, research and exciting training opportunities that we are planning for 2021. Hayley, can you please move to slide three? Perfect, thank you so much. So why is it important for us to focus on pornography? Firstly, I think there are two main reasons and that is because we are gaining increasingly more and more access to the internet <coughs> all across Africa and the globe. More and more children are gaining access to the internet with wonderful positive things for them to learn. But unfortunately also, it increases the potential for children to access harmful content. And secondly, there's a great lack of reliable research information, specifically with regard to exposure to pornographic material. And that is quite concerning because we need to base policies, strategies, our plans on reliable research information. And unfortunately, that is extremely limited. There's very, very few uh, reliable research studies being done in South Africa or across Africa um, up to date. Furthermore, besides the, these two main points, we have other vulnerabilities across African nations. And those include that most of the online environments are unregulated. There's a lack of knowledge about online dangers. And there's a lack of adequate online protection and safety mechanisms <coughs> in place specifically for children. 
And we cannot ignore the fact that children in Africa are also exposed to a number of other unique vulnerabilities, which include poverty, violence and conflict, abuse of power, and traditional beliefs, which greatly impact on their safety as well as their online safety as well. So the internet has greatly transformed pornography as well as the consumption of pornography and we really need to start to focus on this. I'm actually thinking we are almost too late. I'm sorry to say that that's my personal opinion, but we need to emphasize our focus on online pornography. Next slide, please. So internet pornography is a primary source of children's exposure to pornographic material. We see that in all of our research, both unintentionally and intentionally. And children in Africa are not excluded from this exposure, not at all. As we can see, the latest statistics shows us that in Africa, we are growing so fast and we are gaining more and more access to the internet. So our children are definitely not excluded from this exposure. I would like to share with you now some of the why are you at BMR research findings on pornography. And I think um, we are one of the very few research units in Africa that really focus on pornography. And ladies and gentlemen, I must be honest with you, when we started this almost 10 years ago, we got mixed responses from individuals. People really looked at us like, are you crazy to focus on online sexual content? But we saw the bigger picture. We saw how this greatly impacted on the health and well-being of our children. And we just felt that we need to focus on this and we need to produce reliable research information in South Africa. Next slide, please, Haley. Thank you. So the, uh, the first study that we, we did was in 2013 and we launched the results in 2014. And this study actually included almost 1,500 children in South Africa. And this research study already in 2013 confirmed exposure to pornographic material amongst children in South Africa. Approximately three out of every 10 children who participated in that study intentionally viewed pornographic material online. We know that most of the exposure of children is mostly unintentionally, but three out of every 10, child, 10 children who participated in our study confirmed that they intentionally searched for this material. Almost a very high 77.6% of them access pornographic sites occasionally. But what's very uh, concerning was that almost 10% access this material daily, weekly, as well as monthly. And that's already showing us signs of possible addiction amongst children. And this study included children 10 to 17 years. Also, we found that 38.5% of children reported having accidentally come across pornographic web web websites where children under the age of 18 years were exposed to inappropriate sexual manner. So that shows us that children have exposure to a wide variety of pornographic images online. Often it's just heterosexual kind of pornography, but what we are also seeing in our research, it's becoming much more extreme and intense for these children. They are viewing child sexual abuse material, uh, violence, there's a lot of issues that that's actually they exposed to when exposed to pornographic material. Next slide, please. The second study that we did was also in 2014, and this was actually a qualitative research study, including adult uh, participants, where we went back and we, we started 
from these participants' childhood to understand exactly what happened with regard to exposure uh, to pornography. And we found that these participants were exposed to pornographic material at a very young age. And usually it's through peers or family members. It's people that are very close to these participants. What this study clearly pointed us to, uh, uh, pointed out was that they actually developed a preoccupation with pornography. It was so intense that it actually took over their whole existence. They, they really lived to view pornography. I know this sounds very strange, but this is what we found in this study. Their life were actually build around pornographic material. Also what we saw, there were great progression in their viewing behavior. So they definitely started with your heterosexual kind of pornography and this progressed up to where they actually uh, viewed a child pornography or child sexual abuse material or eventually even committed a sexual crime involving a child. And this ladies and gentlemen clearly shows us the impact, the negative impact of pornographic material on human behavior. This study clearly pointed out that the effect of pornographic material on human behavior is very complex. This is something that we really need to look into. It's a combination of physical, cognitive, emotive, and behavioral aspects. There's different aspects combined in this uh, impact. It's not just one single thing that we can um, actually see in an individual. It really affects an individual in total. The scary thing is that we can't see this. This addiction is it's invisible for us to see. So you can have a problem and we will not be able to see this. And that's the scary part. Uh, next slide, please. The latest study that we did was around 2016, 2017, and this study included almost 3,000 children. And you can clearly see that the exposure to pornography is definitely increasing amongst children in South Africa, where we found almost six out of every of the children who participated in our study actually have been exposed to pornographic material, six out of every 10 children. And that is concerning for us. Most of these children have uh, been exposed to pornographic material on the internet. It's definitely the main source of exposure. We still find DVDs, magazines uh, still featuring in our research, but it's definitely the internet. So it clearly shows us where we need to focus with regard to our protection initi initiatives. Children who have been exposed to online pornography have been exposed to violent, extreme forms of sexual content. This we already seen in previous research, but it was again emphasized in our latest study. And a very, very uh, concerning thing again that came out of this uh, this research was the impact of pornography on children. The children experienced mixed emotions. It was traumatic for these children when they were actually exposed to pornographic material because they are still immature and still developing. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in the next slide. So these slides actually covered some of the research that we've done in South Africa. And we really want to do more research on this. It's so needed. And we need your support to do that as well. Next slide, please, Hayley. So what is actually the impact of pornography on children? And I think, ladies and gentlemen, this is quite clear. I think we can't deny this anymore to say that there's no effect or limited effect or it's got a tremendous effect on children. And I want to take you to the literature. If you look at a number of academic articles that are available about this, all of them raise these issues that you can see on your screen. They really raise the fact that children and adolescent brains are still immature. So that's why we really need to focus and really help our children. They are still immature. They can't deal with this exposure. The effect on these children are definitely going to be 
tremendous. And I always say, don't forget your vulnerable adults as well. We have a number of vulnerable adults in our society that's also been impacted by pornographic material in a very negative way. So you will see here that most of the literature, our academic articles, highlight issues such as early initiation of sexual activity, gender role, distortion, objectification of women, sexual aggression, brain changes, and addiction. And there's a lot of work being done in the research and in the academic area at the moment with regard to addiction. And our neuroscience are focusing a lot on the impact of pornographic material on the brain. I'm, I'm going to move to the next slide because I want to show you what we found in the research in South Africa. So if we look at this, just if you bear in mind what we see in the literature and the academic articles, just to briefly touch on what we found in our research with regard to impact. Let's look at the first bullet point in our 2013-2014 study. We found that because these children were premature exposed to pornographic material, they started to believe that this material actually should be accessible on the internet. So they were desensitized, it's becoming normalized for them, and they actually said in the research, no, but we want this on the internet, it's supposed to be out there. A 2014 study, we also find evidence of addiction to pornographic material. It's real. People are addicted to this. It's happening to such an extent that they actually can commit a criminal offense. Then in our 2016-2017 study, this is just so significant where we actually found evidence on the great emotional or psychological impact this material has on children. They were disturbed, they were afraid, they were scared, anxious and insecure after viewing this material. The next bullet point, with, again in our 2016-2017 study, we found that after initial exposure to online pornography, they started to intentionally search for this material, so they are hooked. After just seeing this once, a child will go back and they want to see more and more and more. And this is exactly what the industry wants. They want new customers and new clients. So they want young, innocent children to be hooked. And then the last bullet point, very interesting. It also linked to what we see in the available literature that about 56.2% um, of children agreed that viewing online pornography may encourage young people to be more curious about sex. They also in, uh, it encourage young people to engage in sexual activity as well as viewing women and men differently, creating distorted views amongst women and men in our society. So this is just to support what we are seeing in the literature to say this is what we found in South Africa. And it's really coming out in our research. Next slide, please. So we clearly see, ladies and gentlemen, these results illustrate an urgent need for all of us to address exposure to pornographic material among children in African nations and across the globe. Because the internet is borderless, we need to think now of the world as one, but specifically this presentation and this webinar today say so let's we, let's focus on Africa as well and, and, and focus as a matter of urgency and f uh, address this issue. Just to end off my presentation, next slide please Hayley, is I would like to tell you more about very exciting opportunities that we have planned for next year. I'm very excited about this. We are embarking on a national representative research study on pornography next year. It's going to be our biggest ever. We are covering the whole of South Africa to gain in-depth insight into exposure and impact of online pornography among children. And we are very, um, I would like to present this to you to say that we are inviting organizations and um, 
uh, individuals to become involved in this study. We are opening this project as a syndicate research study. In other words, your organization can have input in this study and become part of this study and then have access to the full database as well as the research report and other opportunities that goes with this project. So there's a wonderful opportunity for organizations to gain access to this and be a part of this research. If you would like more information, you're welcome to contact me. I'm going to share contact details, but this is, we're going to launch this as a syndicate research project. Also, uh, training opportunities next year, we are also um, uh, offering more training opportunities where we are going to focus on understanding the impact of online pornography, as well as how to actually do research with children on such sensitive topics. So we are willing to share our research instruments and provide training to individuals across Africa who are interested to do research in different countries as well. Also, I'm very excited to announce that we have managed with all our report writing to also write two articles based on our research that we've done on pornography over the past years. We submitted these articles or academic articles for publication and hopefully they will be available early next year. So we're really trying to fight against the negative impact of pornographic uh, material of children in South Africa and in Africa, and you are most welcome to contact me for more information. Next slide, please, Haley. There's my contact details on the screen. Please send me an email if you would like to become involved in the syndicate research project. This is an excellent opportunity to gain access to a nationally representative study, or if you're interested in any training opportunities or need any further information, we're always there to support and assist you in this fight against pornography. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for listening to my presentation. And now, Alvin, um, I believe that you are ready to present. Yes, um, I'm going to present now. Do you see another name appearing? Uh, that's my colleague, Materials uh, Laptop that has some technical issues. And so, with time already spent, I, I'm presenting on the harms of pornographic at today's section. We have uh, at the coalition to end sexual exploitation meaning event uh, here from Liberia. Uh, to begin with, we, we need to acknowledge, first of all, that the issue of pornographic remains a dilemma. It is a problem for our community. We do we agree that the internet has done extremely well by ensuring that we have access to information, to education, and to communication. But again, the flip side to it is that internet pornography has caused a lot of harms for Africa. And there's no other harm that is more harmful to Africa than the harm to the brain. And so for our learning objective, we have one learning objective. At the end of today's section, the participants will be able to assess the impact of pornographic on the brain. Uh, it's also important that we give you our disclaimer. This uh, research that we're going to provide you a tip of the iceberg was done in collaboration with Agusi and Gusi when I did my fellowship at the, uh, the, uh, the, Inter, uh, the National Center on Sexual Exploitation and Abuse in uh, Sexual Exploitation in Washington, D.C. So at this juncture, we let it, let it state to you that more robust research have been done in Africa, or there's a need. In Africa, we, we have inadequate, the inadequate data as it relates to pornography. We must let it state that. So we have done all our best in as much as possible to look at some of the international research that has been done. While we do agree that uh, that is not exactly what it may be reflecting, but what it does is that it does recognize is that in totality, that we can give you an elephant picture and a tip of the iceberg as to what the impact of pornography has done to Africa. So since 2009, uh, four, there were 40 studies that were conducted on the brain. 
that supported the reality of compulsory porn news and the negative impacts on porn users, especially as it relates to the brain structure and the function. In that research, we found out that children are more susceptible, that is, they are more vulnerable uh, than adults to additions and the developmental effects of the brain. And you and I know all the reasons for that because at that stage, the brains of the children are also are growing, unlike the adults whom the brain is already fully grown. Uh, an American research, MRR, found out that the increased porn use is linked to decreased brain matter in the regions of the brain associated with motivation and decision making. So in most instances, when you find people, they are not that decisive in making decisions. And also, they cannot easily be motivated. They are not inspired to take on drag. One of these research is telling us that is they're basically, you're basically due to the fight that they are using for. And it also tells us that this swinging is even more pronounced in heavier users of pornography. Besides that, pornography also hijacks the brain reward systems. You know very well that in order for the brain to function, uh, the reward system has to be the emotion. And so when you are excessively using pornography, you find out that uh, right in one, one, one can easily be even tempted to say that you have mental issue. That is, pornography will hijack the brain reward system in the same way that other addictive substances will do. And the research proves that from false porn pornography users bring light up in the pleasure center, just like the way cocaine would do it, just as the way you would be addicted to co cocaine or to marijuana. And this is a hallmark of addition of compulsory news. This brings to the full that pornography is a drug and it can be addicted to. Now, it's also important to link it to our mental health. As you become addicted to it, research also found that there's a strong link between one being wounded and the urge to watching pornography. To disconnect the two is but difficult. A survey was conducted of 1,247 participants who were seeking help for pornography use. These people were using pornography and they wanted to, to get away, to, to, to be rescued. That survey revealed that the, those who view pornography are most likely to experience loneliness. One of the factors that were getting the cost to watching pornography was because of a strong factor that they were doing. And then we also found out that those who were experiencing loneliness were more likely to view pornography. But then to get at that, they had to first of us admit that yes, they were pornographic users. And then we found we also asked them the, the sub questions. When and how do you use pornography? And then the respondents said that when they were lonely. And then we also found out that those who are also using pornography are um, most of the time lonely. Normally they don't do it in the open or they do not do it with another person being around. So loneliness and pornography, they are interlinked. And the way to get out of it is to press the world that makes. Then there's also the strong evidence that users of pornography that experience level steam. As you are wounded, you feel that the world is coming to an end. You don't have valid self-esteem for yourself. So you, you, you begin to experience depression. And because there was a strong evidence that they were, that they were suffering from self-esteem, most of them were also suffering from depression. Now, we live in a world that is competitive. Basic economics will tell you that human wants and needs remain unlimited. Yet, the human being has to survive. In order for us to survive, we have to put our brain to work. But now, there is the thing about it. People who use pornography, there's a direct link that it affects your memory and your work performance. A study of 28 healthy and heterosexual men that view pornography pictures significantly negatively affected working memory. They affected their working memory. The work memory, as you know, is responsible for your short-term holding, for your processing, 
And for manipulation of information, we play a vital role. So if you have data to using photography, you find out that your work memory will decrease. You will not be able to process information. You will not be able to manipulate information. And also it affects your understanding. If you will not be able to understand a simple task in this complex world, you will not be able to comprehend, you will not be able to reason. Then of course, the bigger task in this world when you go to your bureau offices is to find solutions to the vexing problems that we face. You also will not be able to find solutions to simple problems, which now affects your learning and development of speech and decision making. So you can clearly see them that besides it affecting your brain, it will also have an economic impact on you because you will not be able to deliver at the website and then you will be able to, you will now have to lose your job because you are not performing. This time you are paying for value for money. And in an instance where you cannot understand, you cannot reason, you cannot solve problem, there's no way you can communicate, you cannot even make decisions, you are even now, you are even deterred from being motivated to, to move on then you will not have a job. So pornographic effects will affect your memory and work performance. Now, from what we just talked about, it clearly will begin this discussion to tell you that, that pornography was a problem for our community. There is no problem without a solution. What then do we need to do? We need to find answers to the usage of pornography. What is the way forward? We need, everyone has to be involved. What are your mom? What are you a dad? What are you an African? You know, in Africa, in Muslim senses, we don't like to talk about the issue of sex we see as a taboo, but we now have to break that gene. And the way to break that gene is we need to begin to talk about sex with our children. We need to talk to our spouses. We need to talk to our community members. Those of us who come from churches, we need to make the issue of pornography as an issue of discussion. We need to provide education in our community. We need to take the issue, the harms of pornography on the national agenda so that we can be able to restore hope, so that we can be able again to have a healthy life in the absence of pornography. And I will leave you with these two comments. Firstly, we need to first acknowledge that pornography is sexual violence. Sexual violence is, a violence, is violence against human beings. It's a, it's a, it's a degrad degradation of human rights. And so, we have an American activist by the name of Harmon and Grillo who tells us this, that when we see the humanity in someone, it becomes difficult to sexualize and objectify them. And this was stated by Harmon and Grillo that for the way to stop the being of pornography is that picture, that view that, that, that you are going to, to be watching. See that person as a human being and not as an object or as something that can be sexualized. The moment we begin to do that, then we are on the way to taking a giant step against pornography. And of course, also one of these mission statements by Ngozi, Ngozi mission statement, continue to guide us through this type of campaign. That is, if we believe in the human right of people, we must begin now to defend human dignity and oppose sexual expectation. Pornography remains sexual expectation. It's violent against women, girls, and boys. It is about time that we take that step against it. And the way to do it is to protect our brain against the excessive use of pornography. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Alvin, for working through all of the technical difficulties. And thank you to everyone who's attending for uh, for your understanding for uh, these issues as well. Next, we will have Godfrey Katessa speak. And I see that you are on and we can, I believe that we can hear you. If you could just uh, begin. Yes. Great. Yes, you can hear me. Um, uh, thank you very much for Alvin for, for, for sharing. That was a, a very good presentation. Um, my, my, my role today is to present something um, about uh, the harms of pornography on boys. Um, as Boys Mentorship Program, we focus a lot on boys. We focus, we focus mainly on boys. And um, 
and, and discussing the harms of pornography and what it does to boys indeed. We have um, the work, our work started four years ago. And when it started four years ago, we ended up, um, uh, we, we focused, we ended up um, trying to look at how best we can help boys in, in, in this. In this in the... I'm done. Yeah, listen to it. Hmm? How best we can be able to help boys who are struggling mainly with pornography. Um, when I'm talking about pornography, I'm talking from a personal um, experience. Um, I'm talking from a personal experience because I struggled with pornography for uh, for uh, 18, uh, 18 or 19 years. So I know exactly what happens when a boy is um, is 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 um, um, I know when a boy is struggling with pornography and what happens. But um, before I delve deep into that, I would love to um, to throw more light on uh, on, um, on 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 the ages and the stages in which boys uh, most of the boys, according to research, in which most of the boys get trapped into pornography. Um, for me, I got trapped into pornography at the age of 12. And um, from the age of 12 onwards, for another 18 years, I was struggling with, um, with, 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 with pornography. And um, one of the things that really trapped me into pornography was lack of, 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 of a space to be able to talk about this. Yes, and many a times we want to be able to help um, uh, people who are struggling with pornography, especially boys. But you know, as a man has been built, as a man has been has been prepared, in most cases we don't welcome um, uh, uh, spaces where we can talk. We don't welcome spaces where we can be uh, rendered, um, where we can be rendered vulnerable. Yes, and then when we don't welcome spaces where we can be um, uh, vulnerable we tend to struggle a lot. My struggle as an individual um, went on and on and on and on because the society could not, was not prepared to be able to receive such vulnerability. Yes. Now, when the society is not prepared to receive such vulnerability, it gets a hard time. Um, people who are struggling, especially boys who are struggling, they, they they get a hard time accepting that you know I, I need I need help. This is what I need. I need to go into such a group now. For us as boys mentorship, when we started our work, this is what we did. We came up with a full a full department just to handle sexual brokenness. And now, when I'm talking about sexual brokenness, I do not just look at pornography itself, but I'm looking at pornography. I, I, I'm looking at pornography as the as just the, the first stage. Up to the last stage, yes, because I, w w because out of research you have seen that a person starts with pornography and after pornography they go into um, um, other sexual, um, uh, other sexual uh, 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 um, uh, addictions like masturbation, and then from masturbation they go into other 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 things like um, um, anonymous sex and what and what. So we came up with the full department, which says which is able to handle that. But in the process of coming up with that, we also came up with those boys. We, we, we encourage boys that have got testimonies to come up with their testimonies, to share their testimonies, such that if one hears another person sharing a testimony, they will be encouraged to also come out and share a testimony. The idea is and has always been to encourage. Now, when there is no encouragement, when 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 society is so is is focusing on just one particular problem, like, like now for society, somehow we think we know that pornography is a man's program, a problem. We society has prepared it in that way that pornography is a man's problem. So somehow, women who are struggling with pornography or girls who are struggling with pornography. They had a hard time. They have a hard time to to come out and say yes. Now, when 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 we look at a problem and we we put it on one particular agenda, to know that this particular agenda is the only one struggling with this problem, 
we close the doors for another gender. Now, th there is also this one thing that when we look at a problem, and we know that, of course, yes, it's boys struggle with pornography, but we do not give room for, for recovery. We do not give room. We come up with a message that is only aimed at, um, at, um, at, at, uh, at, at guilting, then we also lose the ability to, to help. When we lose the ability to help, people close down, especially boys, they close down. When they close down, it, they continuously struggle alone. Yes, there are many people who want to come out of this problem. There are many people who want to come out of the, of, 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 of the issue of pornography. But how do we help them if our society is constantly, yes, it's constantly saying, ah, pornography is a men's problem. Now, yes, it's a men's problem. So what? When we do not create an environment or a space for them to recover. Now, I want to conclude my, 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 my presentation by, 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 by mentioning this. We can only be able to help boys and men to come out of, 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 their, of, their, of their struggles with pornography when, one, we create a space where they do not feel guilty. We create a space where they do not feel guilty. They do not feel like, yes, the, the, like someone is going to look at you and say, come on, look at this nasty fellow. Yes, because first, this is what I used as a person, as an individual. I came up with my own story. I came up with my own story and I constantly, when I went to school, into schools, when I went into churches, when I went into universities, I shared my own story. And after sharing my own story, I write later on the notice board or on the, on the, on the, on the chalkboard, I write and say, if you are struggling with this same problem that I was struggling with, let's say, years back, you can feel free to reach me out. And I want to assure you, when I left my number or when I left my contact or when I left my website or when I left my, uh, my, 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 my correspondences, many people were willing, many men and boys were willing, even ladies, were willing to come up and say, yeah, I am struggling with this. How can you help me? Yes. But by then I was doing it individually. But I could imagine that if I came up and say, if you are struggling, put up your hand. No one could put up their hand. Yet people were a part of the audience. Yet men were a part of the audience. I, I, I can never forget the day I went into a, a, a father's union, a father's union meeting. It's a church meeting for for, uh, for big parents, but it's father's union. And then I was addressing the effects of pornography into marriages, you know. And after after my presentation, people were feeling shy about what I talked about. But then the following day, which was Monday, I started getting phone calls. Thank you for presenting to our church in Father's Union. Uh, myself and my husband, we have this challenge. We would love to meet you. But then in, in, in real life, in, in, in the presentation, in, in the presentation, and when I asked questions, no one was willing to talk about it. No one was willing to come up and say, you know, this is what we're struggling with. There is still guilt. There is still guilt around the issue of pornography. And you know, when guilt is not addressed, we cannot be able to help. Yes, there are lots and lots of people. Now, I want to finish my presentation by asking everyone who is into the works of pornography, create a space, a safe space. First of all, pornography attacks us anon in an anonymous manner because people get trapped up in an anonymous way. One of the things that we have to be able to pick from pornography is to create anonymous spaces. Yes, anonymous spaces. An anonymous space whereby someone does not have to first reveal their name. And in, 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 in one of the things that we, we I'm advocating for in my country is to create what you call the boys helpline. Paul. You don't need to reveal your name. Call and talk about your problem. And let my person, the other side, be able to walk you through. The, the, the darkest moments whereby you feel you are tempted to watch pornography. Let my person feel like they can talk you to uh, they can talk to you out or they can they can they can they can without being able to 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 to, to lose your 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 identity and what. One of the things that we need to pick from the porn industry is that they attack people anonymously.
we in in order to be able to bring out those people we also have to be able to 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 we, we also have to be able to 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 create anonymous spaces whereby these people can be able to reach out i want to thank you for organizing this uh, this workshop um Haley and the team um uh, the team the, the african team thank you very much i want to stop my 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 presentation right here my website is uh, boysmentorship.africa you can always go there my facebook page godfrey kutesa and then godfrey kutesa um even on twitter god bless you uh thank you very much thank you so much godfrey the chat is blowing up with people saying how right you are to be emphasizing the need for testimonies and for creating a safe judgment-free space for people to talk about the fact that the issue of pornography is impacting so many people and like you said it it really just targets young people especially but adults as well um, so, so there should not be guilt for struggling with it, but there does need to be that space. I just, I just am so grateful uh, that we were able to hear from you today. Thank you all so much for joining this event. I know I learned a lot and I just want to share that while these topics are difficult, we have seen incredible victories and progress around the world when people are willing to stand up and address the harms of pornography in England, Australia, Poland, and other countries, they're passing legislation so that children are not able to see pornography websites with new technologies. In America, 16 states have declared pornography a public health hazard, and hotels, which used to sell pornography, are no longer selling pornography um, on, their, on their TVs in hotel rooms. In Thailand, they recently banned one of the largest pornography websites in the world. And so all around the world, we are seeing groups educating people on the harms of pornography and also offering hope and healing, as Godfrey said, to the people who are struggling with watching pornography as well. So we are not alone and there's so much that we can do. Please consider joining us in the Coalition to End Sexual Exploitation Africa. I am placing um, the link to our website for you to learn more about this in the chat right now. It's endsexualexploitation.org slash ceaseafrica. We will begin having some more regular meetings and trainings in January of 2021. And we're also developing educational materials that you can use like flyers and social media graphics. And we think that there's so much potential um, to, and I'd love to have you all involved in helping to hold educational events, media campaigns, addressing the policies in your community, what, what can be done better in the schools or in the governments to address the harms of pornography. So there's so much that can be done. This presentation has been recorded and in the next couple of days, we will be emailing it out to all of you. So uh, be on the lookout for that. And in the meantime, thank you so, so much for joining, and we hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.